And uh, of course, this is Pete, uh, Sheffield Music Hub singing project coordinator and our singing expert on the Schubert in Schools project. Um, <clears throat> and it feels like a while ago now, but it is only just over a month since we were touring the country with Schubert in Schools. So um, thank you for joining us again. The really great news is that it was a fantastically successful project. And everywhere we went, um, we had the privilege of working with all of you and your students to, um, to create music and to take part in music that was completely unexpected, really high quality and a real thrill to be part of. Um, and Pete, from a singing point of view, I'm just really interested in, in all of the things that have gone so well in this. What, what's been a highlight for you? For me, the real um, the beauty of this project was seeing people, young people, sing music that, on the face of it, they were never going to sing. Yeah, that they, the, in, t unless a project like this existed, those children, the majority, would never come across Schubert in their lifetime, let alone have the chance to perform it with some of the great proponents of his work sort of internationally. Um, and that through that music, through the, um, the project based around that music, they found their way to express themselves through their own music as well. And they um, were able to create inspired by the music of Schubert. Um, and that creation and the singing of the original Schubert, it all this big, mushy, fantasticness of, um, of creativity, which uh, got some absolutely stunning results. Mm, yeah, absolutely. And uh, the feedback that we've had from many of you so far has been exactly that, that this was a project that unlocked things in students that perhaps we couldn't have expected. Um, if, in my mind, it's just further evidence of the power of music. So we're really glad that you're um, sort of fellow passengers on that campaign with us and glad that we've been able to bring in something that supports you in your continuing journey through music. Um, we, there's a whole load of feedback and reporting to be done, of course, and for the few of you who haven't yet filled in the surveys that Naomi has sent to you, we would be really grateful for that by the beginning of next week. So you've got the weekend to do it. Um, <clears throat> just because it's really important for us to be able to go back to funders and to say this is how successful and how really good this was. Um, what we'd like to do in the next half an hour or so is share some more of the outcomes with you. Talk a little bit about um, things that we want to improve and things that perhaps gaps that were in this one that we want to address in the future. And then very much to talk about next steps because um, this was a... a um, so shall we talk a little bit more about the singing aspect of this project, um, the different singing that we encountered around the country and kind of your observations on what worked really well about that and perhaps how we can support teachers to... Uh, facilitate even better singing in, in the future? Sure. I mean, what was really apparent everywhere we went, there were, there were two distinct sides to the singing. There were groups of young people singing Schubert songs, and that in itself was deeply effective. I'm thinking, I think particularly, a, a real highlight for me, and I think I've said it before, it's probably on one of the videos people have already seen, but the uh, performance of Delyman, a, a, a um, hurdy-gurdy man, in uh, Doncaster was absolutely beautiful. It was, it was reading, which is probably the, uh, the Air Force's number from Barking, the lads yeah. in Barking, which is a, a number inspired by the Schubert, but all about how they as a group support each other and, and help each other through, through life's problems. Um, and that was just stunning. Diff different styles of singing, they were all singing. Yeah, it's just, it, singing is one thing but it's such a broad field to play around in. Yeah, absolutely. And, and there's that, that really true point, isn't there, about how singing brings people together as groups, mm. creates their identity, enables them to express that identity to the wider world. And I think we very much heard that from our colleagues in Barking, didn't we, that that group of lads had become more of a friendship group, more of a social group as a result of... Music. Uh, absolutely, and, and I know they, they were talking afterwards about how they, they should work together more and create more music and do more, and that's absolutely brilliant, mm. absolutely fantastic. It's really cool. So some of the comments that we've had from you um, so far talk about how this project has enabled um, you to approach composition in a different way with perhaps a different starting point, which obviously is music to our ears, no pun intended. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> and also just what you've said, that music outside... Of, like, of theirs mm. that they're familiar with, that he 
maybe doesn't know yet. <laughs> um, I'd like to find out from Roddy how many of those he <laughs> listened to, actually, and how many have made it onto his regular playlist. We should, I know, we should yeah. chase him up. Well, number 10 was Baby Shark, wasn't it? So I'm sure well, that's become a regular. But see we, that, yes. We were good. To, to, to let us know about the others. Um, <clears throat> and there's a real thing about pride. Uh, so many of you have said that this project and what your students did increased their pride in themselves and their achievements and their ability to work with stimuluses, um, which is just so good. Um, for many of you, it's developed your, your own practice in terms of the way that you approach composition and singing in the classroom, which feels like a real win for us. Yep. Uh, and your confidence in delivering whole class singing in particular. <clears throat> and in general, so far, you've told us that the project exceeded expectations with the really good resources which you've starred in, uh, it was very good. And then professional artists as role models, and especially for the boys. And that's something as well which feels key. I mean, here in Sheffield, Pete runs Changing Voices, which is a choir for um, boys whose voices are on that progression as they change into adolescence. Mm. Do you want to say any more about that and the importance of it? Sure. I think that's... And actually, that's something we, we really worked hard with the resources that you've got there. To, um, to give you a framework for thinking about how to work with that age range of students. Not just the boys, actually, because as boys' voices change, so do girls' voices. It's just slightly less obvious in many ways because you've not got that octave shift going on. Mm. Um, but um, we've given you a whole bunch of resources there in that purple book about thinking about how to assess in a nice way rather than a, a, a data-driven way um, to find out what voices you have in your class um, and know how to use... Um, how to use music in a way that allows them at every stage of voice change to engage with it. Um, I think in what we saw through this project this time, we didn't see that much of, the, of what possibility there is there. Um, and that was mainly because actually we worked mainly with year sevens mm. across the country. And in most year seven classrooms, most of your boys are on the very early stages of voice change. So we didn't need to have, have arrangements of things that covered treble voices and baritone voices in the same room. Um, but there's stuff there. There's brilliant stuff there to help you think about that. Um, and you started this question. And I've rambled on. We're talking about changing voices here in Sheffield. Um, yeah, that's a choir we run here precisely for that, that group. But they are, it's called a Canby Art Choir, and they are out there in um, other, other organisations. The National Youth Choir of Great Britain has a Canby Art Choir. There are various Canby Art Choirs popping up around the country. Um, and there's absolutely no reason why there shouldn't be one in your school. Um, there's a whole bunch of resources there to help you understand what it is that you would need to set up to make that work. Um, so potentially that's an enormous follow-on from this project, which isn't even anything to do with Schubert. Yeah, absolutely. And it, we know that a lot of you have really good relationships with your music hub already, um, but this might be something that you'd like to discuss with them. Maybe they run one already. Sheffield's is here and thriving. Um, a, a, and other music hubs might have one already or they might not, and it might be a good prompt to start mm -hmm. one. Um, I'm sure you're welcome to contact Pete as well. Yeah, absolutely. Please do, please do get in touch with me. Um, I'm sure your, uh, your well, peter.taylor at sheffield.gov.uk will get me, um, but equally Naomi's got my contacts and we can, we can let you have those. Um, Peter being your stage name. Yes, full on Peter, not Pete on stage. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, on, um, just whilst I remember, London Youth Choir are also developing a boys choir, a Cambiata boys choir as well, so that's a new, new thing coming up at the moment. Very good. So um, a little bit later on, we're going to give you the world premiere of, <laughs> just can be done in eight short minutes, the essence of this project and some of the highlights of those few weeks. Um, so that's coming up a little bit later on. After the weekend, we're going to be uploading and publishing all of the individual films of your singing and your compositions. So obviously that's going to be a really exciting moment for us. And also, I hope for you, as you um, share them far and wide, use them as a way of celebrating what you've achieved, what everyone's achieved together. Um, and then, hopefully, as a stimulus for future work as well. I think you've just alluded to how a Cambiata choir could be a kind of unexpected but really fantastic way of following this project mm. up for some young people. 
Um, and we'd like to talk a little bit more about next steps. Um, the first thing to say is that you know, we're not done. We absolutely want to keep working with, well, Pete and Andy, our resident experts, and of course with Roddy and Chris, but actually also with a wider pool of professionals um, to bring, more, to bring people into schools more and create more things like the culmination events that you all came to centrally as well, because that, that's a really valuable part of what we're all doing, you know, contact with professionals. Um, but the other thing is that, as Pete says, we've got all these resources, and we know from the first time round in Sheffield in 2016 that what we did with those students then and those teachers then is still being used uh, now, isn't it? Three yeah. years on, the legacy is really, you know, alive and well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I think in, in both schools, after that, um, that initial project, they uh, developed a year seven um, scheme of work that was centred around the idea of singing and composing through song. Mm. Um, and I, I believe those are still in, out there in action. Yeah, Absolutely. And we want to kind of liberate you to go ahead and do that. You know, by all means, we'll back you and we'll bring in professionals and we'll provide more opportunities to come together. But actually, in many ways, it is over to you to make of this whatever you like. Keep us informed, let us know, and we can share learning and share practice mm. with, with, with colleagues and further afield. Um, but you know, we'd just be fascinated to see what comes of this in your schools in the months and years to come. Absolutely. I think it's worth saying that whilst in the immediate future the, the, um, the presence of a culmination event has gone away, there's nothing we're working towards in that sense, um, Schubert's Winterweiser is not going away. It's been around for a couple of hundred years and will continue to be around for m millennia. Um, so th that's still there and those resources are still there. And there's, um, I hope if you found something uh, positive out of this project and the feedback says you absolutely have, um, I hope you can see that you can use that resource to create <coughs> schemes of work that support at every stage of, um, of a secondary school's life, I think. Absolutely, yeah. Um, so it'll be on Monday, as I say, that, that those individual films will start to go live. Uh, just another plea, a repeated plea for you to send, if you haven't done already, your evaluation answers by then. If it's easier to give Naomi a ring and, and talk to her over the phone, or even just send bullet points, any of that is fine. But it's really important, please, that we, that we do hear from you, all of you, um, because then we can work better in future. We can get more money to do more things like this. Um, is there anything else do you think to say about how we can support singing? Uh, I mean, we've got the resources, but have you got any more plans, maybe with the Music Hub or, or individually, to, uh, you know, to, to keep supporting singing at secondary level? Um, I mean, I think it, I can talk about Sheffield um, in terms of what, we, what we're doing to support, and we're always looking for opportunities to work with schools, um, because ultimately we have expertise in singing, but you have expertise in secondary school music. Um, the two, um, these things work well when there's a collision of those two, um, those two worlds. And I think that's been the strength of the Schubert in Schools project. We've had the collision of Roddy and Chris and Music in the Round mm. and Sheffield Music Hub and Andy's work and, um, and you and the schools. And that collision is what's got these phenomenal results. Um, so I think... There's, there's, a gen, there's a national picture that singing at secondary schools is, is, is weak. It's, it's not as strong as it, as it could be. Um, and that can change, but it needs commitment on both sides. It needs commitment from school colleagues, and it also needs commitment from those organisations out there who, there who can support you. Mm. And I would say um, contact your local music hub and ask for that support. Um, find out what is out there. Really go and look there are millions of people out there who would love to help mm. secondary school singing become a big thing. And I, I think I, I mean that. I mm. think there are millions, because there are millions of people out there who sing who decry the fact that singing doesn't happen in schools anymore. And often it's because they don't know it is happening. Um, but it would be great for you to work together to make that happen. And it's funny, isn't it, how in this project, in, even in a few short weeks, quite a lot of people have gone from saying, oh, this isn't for us or this doesn't happen to actually, well, we're doing it and we're loving it. Mm. And it's those transitions, those, um, those moments where somebody shifts their perspective. I'm just, uh, we, really we've, we've got some of the evaluation mm. notes here in front of yeah. us and I'm just spotting one of these that comes out here. 
Um, the question was, what changes or developments did you most notice in particular students? And someone's written here, willingness to sing. We really struggled with this before, and this approach, especially the resources and videos, worked really well. They were keen to sing and loved doing silly warm-ups. Were they um, yours? They were my warm-ups, I imagine, although none of them were mine. I pinched almost all of my warm-ups from other people. And by the way, that's the only way anyone has an exciting warm-up is by stealing it off someone else. So go out there and magpie your way, steal other ideas from other people. <laughs> I'm sure someone once has written some warm-ups. Maybe I should give them some credit. But, um, but it says it gave us all, the staff included, the confidence to do this, to do singing mm. with reluctant year nines, actually, that one is. Mm. So that's um, the silly warm-ups work with every, with every student, you've just got to have the confidence to give it a go. Because actually it's about unlocking your voice, you know, yeah. whichever way you go about it, it's about just f finding a starting point and then going from there, isn't yeah. it? And I think actually that's something, I've, I've talked about it on these um, web webinars before, and it's certainly something in the, in the Purple Resources book, mm -hmm. but um, if you want to unlock that willingness to sing, um, you have to give your young people the opportunity to find their voice and experiment with the voice and you've got to create a, a, an environment where they understand that they can fail they can make mm -hmm. ridiculous noises that they're not happy with and that's fine because only through that um, experimentation do you find your own sound and once you find your own sound you can start to become confident in it and then you can use your own sound to do this huge range of things mm -hmm. Um, and I think there's the, the ideas within the Purple Pack of spreading the work out, probably more than most schools got to do in this project, um, to really learn from your students how their voices mm. fit into their lives. Mm. And it's uh, enormously powerful. It's really good. And, and we've had more than one uh, inquiry from you about how to really shout about the impact that this project has had in school and on your students. Um, I think it, it, part of what we're doing is uh, collecting you know, everything that's happened around the country and talking about it more widely. So um, Music in the Round has just launched a press release uh, off the back of the documentary that you're about to see, um, just to get that out to a wider audience. Mm. Uh, there's a whole load of um, high resolution photographs that are available to you and if you've not accessed them yet then do and Naomi can help you with that if needed um, and as I say from Monday all of the films the amazing I mean they're incredible films aren't they mm. that you yeah. just watch them you just go the variety of this and stuff that we could never have imagined would have been created and mm. suddenly it's just there it's amazing so all of that is 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 kind of you know hitting the streets now as it were and that's just uh, made me think about uh, there's a, a video doing the rounds on Facebook and social media at the moment um, it's a clip from I think Anglia TV's local news broadcast uh, it's an ITV news broadcast um, and it's to do with I believe the Voices Foundation singing school project um, and it's celebrating this amazing work going on through the Voices Foundation mm -hmm. in primary schools in an area and the outcomes from that um, I've been involved with the project with Sheffield and Milton Keynes hubs and uh, Out of the Ark, who have done a singing, a singing schools project, they all seem to be called singing schools, a uh, project that is, has found strong evidence and has got loads of lovely clips um, to, sh to, to show that evidence that singing at pri primary school has an enormous impact on life and learning. Mm. Um, and I know there's, there's countless... Um, you, you're always reading reports of how music has an impact on learning. Um, the singing ones always seem to be focused on primary school, um, and there's a very good reason for that. Um, but some of this stuff that we've produced from this project could be a really strong message to send out there that it, it can work at secondary school too. Um, and yeah, feel, I, I, I don't know if I'm speaking out of turn here, but I think feel free to share what, what's come out of this project. Mm. Please promote it. Please get out there and tell people about it. Um, I often see school websites that have little blog pieces about how the football team went and beat some other team, <laughs> or how the year threes had a great day at the swimming gala. Um, it's not very often I see those, music, um, those school websites boasting about music projects that their children have been involved with, but even when I know they've been involved in these projects. I know, so, yeah. but it's amazing, isn't it? We've, we've got all this high quality material that you know, we're now sharing with you that can absolutely tell that story. 
Yeah. So, you know, please do take advantage of it. Talk to your school communications team, if, they, if you have one, yeah. and, and get this out there. Absolutely, and we're, we're counting down the seconds now till we hit play on this amazing film. Um, but before that, just a couple of other things. One is to do with perhaps some of the things that you said about maybe the limitations or the, um, the, the, what might be starting points in this project, which might later become a much fuller idea. One of them was, of course, just about the time scale. Um, I think we, uh, in some schools, you, you, you made this happen in only a few weeks. I mean, it was amazing what, what <laughs> you came up with. In other cases, it was perhaps a month or two. Um, but I think what you said and what we completely agree with is that ideally this material would be built into a terms or even a year's lesson plans in a really integrated way so that it was cumulative, it made sense as it went along rather than as this time, some of you rightly said, it was like, oh, we'd, let's do this. It was quite quick and last minute. Um, so, you know, we, again, invitation to you to start planning now as, as, as far ahead as you like. But also, we are going to be working, in, aren't we, in terms of how this can become a much longer term project that becomes much more embedded. And I, actually, I suppose um, it, might, it, be, it would be really helpful if you mm. have particular thoughts about that. Um, let us know. If you're sitting there thinking, we had a great time, this was fantastic for our students. If I'd known about it and had the resources in February, mm. it would have been even better. Let us know so that we can, um, we can, we can know the timescales that you need to work to and we can plan that into our, our, our future planning. Mm, absolutely. One of the other things that you said was, uh, <laughs> this is a funny one, that there, there, were, there were too many resources, there was too much. And that was amazing to hear because we know how busy you are, and we know that you need resources that you can use immediately and get to grips with and that serve your purpose. Um, and if we provided too much, well, I guess firstly, I hope you found the things that were most relevant to you, your classroom, your students, your particular needs. Um, secondly, if, if not, and if there was too much to wade through, then you know, let us know what was valuable and let us know perhaps what wasn't so much because we can always hone, we always want to learn from mm. the experts that we're working alongside and improve for the future. Um, and then I suppose the third thing is, you know, th there was a load of stuff, um, there were a load of videos that Pete and others starred in. Uh, there was also the really quite weighty resource pack, you know, the purple book. Um, there were all the arrangements and the transcriptions of the songs, the backing tracks, there was loads of stuff. So it would be helpful Anything else you want to tell us about what of that worked and what didn't, and then we can focus accordingly, would be really valuable. And of course, anything that wasn't there that you really wish was mm. would be really useful to know as well, so yeah. we can make that right. Absolutely. So um, we're definitely going to keep in touch with you. We want to let you know about how Schubert in Schools develops from here. Um, in my mind, it's got a, a real momentum now. It's got a mm. life of its own, really. I mean, Roddy, Roddy and Chris have been working on spin-offs from this as well in different ways so it could go anywhere and I think it's going to become more publicly known I think more people will be, be aware of it which is so exciting mm -hmm. um, we'll let you know when we've got the next round of professionals to offer to you in schools and in culminations uh, and in the meantime please let us know what you're doing so that we can talk about it share it celebrate it um, I'm just going to look at Naomi to see if there's anything else that Naomi wants us to mention that we've not said. No, thumbs up. All We're good. doing well. Two doing thumbs job, up. We? We're good. amazing. Fantastic. Excellent. Um, so, yeah, so those final um, kind of reminders then, ple please, are to send us your evaluation if you've not done so by Monday. Keep in touch with us more generally about how Schubert in Schools is progressing for you. And once we've got the documentary and all those individual films, yeah, make the most of them. They're yours to celebrate and share and enjoy. So. Thanks once again from me. Pete, is there anything else from, from you? Just keep singing, and um, you've proved in this project that your secondary school pupils will and do sing. Don't let it die. Keep it going. Well, here's to that. Well, look, thanks again. We look forward to, to making music with you again sometime. But in the meantime, thanks. And thanks bye. a lot. Bye-bye. Bye for now. Enjoy. Exactly the time I was looking to learn uh, Winterreise in the original German, Chris Glynn's project to have Jeremy Sands translate all three of the, the, the song cycles happened to do at uh, just the moment.
The language that Jeremy has written is, is, is genius stuff. It's <laughs> as simple as boy meets girl, girl rejects boy, boy wanders around uh, for 24 songs on a heath. It's pop song stuff, and nothing more complicated than that. And as we were going through it, singing in English, I had a, a kind of light bulb moment, and I thought, this is perfect for school use. With his frozen fingers, plays as best he can. Our role has been very much that of joining up a whole load of energy and expertise from lots of different sources. This all started three years ago with what we're now calling a pilot project, but actually it was a fantastically successful project in its own right. From there we were inspired to take Schubert further afield. So we brought in singing and composition experts to create resources for teachers. We um, joined them up with Roddy and Chris. We've worked with music hubs around the country and with venues and partners like here at the Stables. This project is really about bringing Schubert's winter journey into schools across the UK uh, and taking this song cycle, which is about a journey, on a journey. <laughs> Sound of it. I had a little look on the website, saw some of the material from a couple of years ago and uh, the kids just looked like they were having a fantastic time. So yeah, I'd like some of that please for, for my students. My initial reaction was sort of worrying how they would kind of engage with the whole Schubert thing. But then as soon as I looked through the resource pack and kind of watched the videos that we'd been given, um, I, I knew sort of quite soon on that it was going to be accessible for them. The resources provided gave us a way into composing through singing, um, so it kind of ticked two boxes really. We know that whole class singing and whole class composition are two of the things which teachers always want more support with and I think the resources that we've created take a really, really big step towards that. They wanted to sing, they wanted to do the activities and that got them into singing and I, I, that's something I've not been able to get out of them until this. No one seems to we've done quite a lot of work with Music in the Round already in the past so we, we enjoyed that relationship and we knew it would be a, a quality project. Just getting the students working in a professional venue, which we try and encourage all of the time, is a really valuable experience, obviously, working with professional musicians as well. And although for some of it's a bit out of their comfort zone, they're just kind of throwing themselves at it and it's been really good to see them engage with that. For the kids to feel they own it, they need to create it, they need to have a hand in it, they need to get their hands dirty with it. And that's why I think this project is, uh, is so much fun and why it, it hopefully is going to have the impact it should have. The idea of doing something with classical music, but in a way that's really approachable and accessible for kids who are younger. That's why I was so excited about it, because it is music that I think a lot of them would like if they listened to it. When they first saw the idea and they read the words, um, you could see that they were intrigued and interested in it. The idea of the thread of having a story is really important because um, then it's something for them to latch onto because regardless of when that was written, the music has a story. If only burning kisses. So it gives the children the opportunity to experience something from way back that actually shares quite a lot of characteristics with the music they listen to today. I've been really sort of pleasantly surprised how open I've been about that style of music. I remember our first rehearsal, I played it, and by the time we got halfway through, I was already humming and singing the melodies. And I was just sort of blown away by that, really. By the end of today, I think they'll come out with a much better experience and opinion of classical music, because we're not telling them that they have to like something. We're just getting them experienced in it and having the right to know about it, which some of these kids don't always get. When we started embarking, I think we asked the children if who'd heard of Schubert and nobody had. And one of the wonderful things about this project is that hopefully that hundreds of children all over the country will have heard of Schubert and maybe we've planted a seed. There's something they can go and explore on Spotify or whatever. Um, alongside the music that they maybe normally listen to, they can explore something different um, and have a, have a way in. It's different from the other things they do. It's a good way to let out some of the stress they have in school sometimes. It's been a fantastic opportunity for them, and I think they'll, you know, I think they'll remember it and, and look back on it with, uh, with sort of fondness. It's about this experience. It shouldn't just be in a classroom. That's what I want. I want more of this. 
coming to a theatre, performing, get, getting advice from you know, professionals uh, and what life could be like you know, sort of in the creative arts. You know, it hopefully it'll open up doors from that they've never really thought of before. It's a double win because we're getting them into the, into the concert hall, we're getting them to be involved in and respond to some classical music. A project like this is bringing first class music into the lives of our students and helping energise and motivate our, our teachers through working with skilled practitioners and musicians. You're more free than in a classroom where they just tell you exactly what to do. It's not an opportunity you get very often. I, I like singing a lot, so to get an experience like this was really fun. It was a bit nervous, but it was basically fun. I liked it. Over the top of what I thought I'd be able to get to. This whole experience has been amazing. Breathtaking, really. We had a really good time. I really enjoyed it. When this experience is done, there's there's so much more that we can do with them. And there's so much that we've, I know that I've taken away from this experience as well, that I can take further with them um, and in all other aspects of my teaching. Performing on the same stage as like real musicians makes me feel like when I'm older, I can be doing the same thing and inspiring other young people to want to do this as well. It's really exciting to see what all the different schools and all the different areas of the country are doing with this amazing piece of music. Before we started, I had no idea what shape it was going to take. And now I know. Now I've seen it. Now I've seen the classes uh, uh, sing back to me. And I've seen classes do their own work back to me. Uh, and I've seen what's possible, which just leaves me really anxious for more. The range of schools we've been into this time prove that any school with a music teacher who's willing to give things a try can take this project and introduce this music to their students. These guys have got so much positivity out of being involved in this project. So many things that hopefully will last them for lifetimes. Um, and I want that everywhere. It's been beyond what we'd expected and it just motivates us all the more to go on to phase two and see what we can do next. This project has so much potential to go on now and become something bigger and even better. And it's just been the most amazing experience sharing the music with them. Hey.